Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe, and welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today I'm at the Hensel Co-op Seed Warehouse, catching up with Dave and Luigi. Dave, how's it going? Great, Bern, you? I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. Hey, it is mid-April, Yep. Um, and you're getting a busy band. Yep, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And um, what's, uh, what's ideal planting window for you? I like the last few days in May, first few days in June. Right. Okay, so we've got about, oh, six weeks. It's about mid-April here. Let's talk about what we need to do to get ready. You yeah. say, you know, you've got a checklist um, yep. that's going to take you through the next six weeks. What's on the top? Uh, most important one is to be organized. Yeah. And that means a number of different things. A um, couple of which, uh, one is, is have your crop plans ready uh, with the varieties you're going to plant in each field and the populations that you want to plant at. Mm -hmm. Number two is uh, make sure your planter monitors are ready to go and uh, that they're working, uh, especially if you're doing variable rate planting. Yeah. Have the scripts loaded on the, on the monitor and make sure that they're working. Yeah. What about seed? You know, what do we need to do? Obviously, we've got to have it on hand, and you we've got to know what we got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have the seed in the shed ready. Um, nothing worse than, than not having the seed in the shed and relying on our seed supplier to get out to you just in time. Mm -hmm. I always like to get it out in the shed early. That way, you have it there when you're ready for it. Puts a lot less pressure on you and a lot less pressure on the seed supplier as well. What do we need to be thinking about looking at that seed, specifically from a seed size perspective? Yeah. Seed size is important. Um, it uh, you need to determine if whether you're not you have the right plates or not, or the seed or the right seed discs, and also if you have to adjust your vacuum pressure when mm -hmm. when you go to the field to plant. How important is it for us to, to pay attention to germination when we're thinking about our seed? That's important too. Uh, germination is uh, uh, certified number one seed is guaranteed minimum 85%. Um, more often than not, the seed is 90% plus. So, you know, if you, if you need to adjust, you can adjust up or down as required. Okay, Dave, next up, I want to talk the planter. Now, mm -hmm. last year, you and I did a pretty cool video series yep. on the planter. Yep. Um, you went A to Z, every nuts, all the nuts and bolts. Yep. I encourage everybody to take a look at that. But hey, let's, uh, let's just review a few things. Um, from your perspective, what's, what's the most important thing? You like to say, hey, we need a level planter. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the planter has to be level in order to operate properly. If, if uh, the toolbar should be level or, or running slightly uphill, and if you set it like that, then uh, your trash whippers and your coulters don't go too deep on the front. And then likewise, the uh, closing or firming wheels mm. are at the proper, doing their proper thing mm. on the back end then as well. What about the drive systems? Yeah, uh, a lot of the planters now are, are electric driven or, or hydraulic driven. Uh, for those planters that are mechanically driven by chain yet, it's important to make sure that the chains are in good shape if they're not, if they're kinked or worn, get rid of them, replace them with new ones. Mm. And you want to keep an eye on the, those seed tubes, seed discs? Yeah, the seed tubes, uh, what happens with them is they rub against the inside of the, uh, of the uh, seed discs and they can get a little dog-eared flap on them or, or, or yeah, a hole in, on the side of it. You definitely want to replace those tubes once they're worn for sure. Yeah, and yeah. those closing systems, always uh, that, that's, that's what ties them all together? Yeah, that's right. Uh, important to get that seed firmed nicely into the seed trench. Um, so your closing wheels should be centered on, on top of the row. Um, as well as the uh, seed units, uh, you want to make sure you have a proper um, uh, blade to blade contact, which is usually about one and a half to two and a half inches. And that allows a nice firm uh, V trench versus a W trench if, if they're worn out. And at the same time, you want to make sure your, your uh, gauge wheels are rubbing slightly against the disc that keeps the dry dirt out from falling into the seat trench and keeps your seat trench nice and firm. Okay, Dave, um, we've got our seed, mm -hmm. planters prepped, yep. ready to roll. You're looking forward to that last week in May. Um, yep. But you know, when it comes to you know, planting prep, you say it actually starts the year before. Yeah, for sure. Um, you always want to make sure you have your perennial weeds controlled uh, in the years prior to growing dry beans. Um, you want to start with a clean field and um, only because your herbicide options are more limited in dry bean crop than they are in, in either wheat or corn. Yeah. Now, 
fast forward to that mm -hmm. week in, that last week in May. Yep. What are you looking for? Nice warm soil? You bet. Nice warm soil, nice moisture levels. Ideally you want to see the beans twice in one week. Once when you're dropping the seed into the into the planter box and secondly is when they're coming up out of the ground. Awesome. Hey, well, we'll look forward to that. Um, Dave, thanks for taking some time. Uh, always great to have you on the Edible Beans right. School. Great to participate. Yeah.